Hi, I'm Frank Fry from PublicSpace.net, and today I'm walking you through some ways you can avoid problems when renaming files on macOS. Next week I will be talking in more detail about how to handle large renaming jobs, like when you want to rename illegal characters that might cause problems for users of other operating systems, such as Windows or Unix, for online content management systems, or Unix tools such as version management systems. One thing that few people are aware of is that different platforms have different conventions for which characters can appear in a file name. macOS has a very permissive, non-technical convention for file names. You can use forward slashes, spaces, accents, umlauts, and other diacritical marks. Japanese kanji, Chinese logograms, emoji, etc. etc. But this is emphatically not the case on all file systems. This introduces a host of problems when it comes to renaming files. Windows file systems typically don't accept even common symbols such as slashes, question marks, or colons. And different file systems have different encodings for international characters, such as UTF-8, UTF-16, Mac Roman, various MS Windows character sets, etc. One oddity about how macOS works is worth explaining here in more detail. macOS file names have followed the same rules since the days of classic macOS where the file system was HFS or HFS+. Mac OS X, however, is a Unix-based system. One significant difference between both is how you write so-called file paths. An absolute file path is basically a path from the top level of your hard drive to a single specific file. You have probably seen Unix-style paths, such as user bin ls. This means the file ls in the folder bin, which itself is in the folder user. The Mac, of course, had to do things differently and used the colon character to separate path components. So it looked like this. The practical offspring of this is that some parts of macOS disallow the colon in file names, whereas others disallow the forward slash. Basically, as far as the user is concerned, you're allowed to use forward slashes in file names, but not colons. The very same file when viewed from the Unix command line or internally by the file system cannot contain forward slashes. macOS therefore uses a trick. Depending on who is asking, it substitutes the colon for the slash and vice versa, which can cause trouble. So the file that you can see as hello slash world is actually known to the file system as hello colon world. My recommendation would be to use neither forward slashes nor colons in your file names. All this creates the need to sanitize file names so that they are easily accessible from different platforms. My Better Finder Rename tool has some specific features to make this easier. You have generic features such as replacing or removing specific characters, keeping only specific characters, stripping leading or trailing spaces, removing diacritical marks such as umlauts, accents, etc as well as a specific action for making Mac file names compatible with Windows NTFS and SMB. It is, however, important to realize that the Better Finder rename has to rely on the file system drivers behaving correctly. This is a particular issue when you are trying to remove or replace potentially troublesome file name characters like forward or backward slashes, colons, emoji, etc. The reason you want to remove them in the first place is precisely the reason why they might be causing trouble during the renaming. This means that it is best if your files are on a local hard drive that is formatted with the standard Apple file system. This will in general prevent any issues with file drive compatibility and be the fastest as well as the most reliable place for renaming your files. So in order to avoid problems, it's always best to perform the renaming as close as possible to the optimal conditions of renaming them on an APFS formatted local hard drive. So if you have the choice between renaming files on a remote drive that may be using a different file system with different naming conventions, or to rename the same files locally on your own hard disk, it is often a much better idea to transfer the files over to your machine, rename them there, and then copy them back. Some network-attached storage devices, in addition to having an Ethernet port connecting them to the local area network, also offer USB or a Thunderbolt direct connection option might be worth taking your MacBook to the drive and connecting it directly. Unfortunately, few network drive options are designed specifically for use with Macs, and many have their own custom file systems, as well as bridging drivers, 
none of which are 100% compatible with the Mac way of doing things. This often does not matter. But the more files you rename, the more likely you are to run into every single problem that might be hidden somewhere in the drivers. The Drobo NAS systems are traditionally particularly bad in this respect. Drobo have their own proprietary file system with amazing capabilities. But their compatibility with the world outside Drobo can be very poor. If you're on Drobo, if at all possible, move your files before renaming them and stick to the simplest, most standard file names. In the same vein of staying as close as possible to the Mac standard file system conventions, you will often have two or more different options on how to mount a network drive. You can usually mount a drive as SMB, which is the Windows standard, or as AFP, the Apple Filing Protocol. It is almost always better to mount drives as AFP if you can. A quick word about syncing services, such as Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, or Apple's own iCloud drive. It is usually a supremely bad idea to batch rename files that are managed by any of those services. All except iCloud Drive have different file name conventions, and even if they work 100% correctly, you will run into translation issues. All of them, including iCloud Drive, simulate local files using Apple's own sync services interface, which is anything but great and reliable. You are basically asking for trouble. A better finder rename can rename files on any of those systems, but none of them are 100% reliable. It's best to move your files to a local folder, or if you want to live dangerously, at least make sure that all the files have actually been physically downloaded to your hard drive. A common problem is that when a better finder rename touches the file name, the sync service decides that now is a great moment to download the entire file. This usually happens on the finder's main thread, resulting in your Mac beach balling, potentially for a very long time. You have been warned. And that brings us to the end of this short video. I hope you found it to be useful. Don't forget about next week's video on how to handle large renaming jobs. I'd also really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.